Isang magandang gabi po mga katipon sa Pilipinas. Ito po ang ating katipunan, muling suma sa inyo mga tagapaginig upang magbigay ng mahalagang informasyon, magbigay liwanag, at sigit sa lahat makinig sa inyong mga dain at kuro-kuro hinggit sa mga problemang patuloy nagpapahirap sa ating kalagayan at kabuhayan. Sa susunod na oras, sisikapin po namin ipaliwanag ang iba-ibang bahagi ng ating ekonomiya at ang mga mabibigat pang local and international issues na may malaking epekto sa ating buhay at kinabukasan. Ito po ang inyong katipon na si Butch Valdez. Kasama pa rin natin dito ang uh, ating uh, mausay na technical assistant at mamumuno ng Philippine Larusia Society na si Itos Valdez. Uh, at ang mga iba nating mga katipon sa Save the Nation na nanonood at uh, sinusubaybayan po ang ating programa. Uh, at uh, marami pa ibang uh, ibang uh, kasama lalong-lalo na po sa katipunan ng demokratikong Pilipino. Kami lahat ay nandito nag-aanyaya sa inyo na makibahagi sa ating karalakayan, sa pagsusuri ng mga kasalukuyang problema at paghanap ng kaukulang solusyon. Okay, marami pong uh, nangyayari. Marami pong nangyayari, of course. Uh, nababalitaan nyo na yan din uh, dito po sa ating uh, mga television channels at radio. Yung mga uh, pagpapalit ng uh, isang uh, ma ma ano, malaking news sa itong pagbibitiw uh, o pagpapalit ng ating pong... Uh, NEDA uh, Secretary na si uh, Pernia at ang sabi niya uh, nag-resign daw siya hindi ko natin, natin alam kung nag-resign o natanggal dahil na meron siyang diferensya dito sa economic development policy ang nakikita natin siguro na uh, nakatunggalin niya dyan at nabangga ay walang iba kundi po si Secretary Sunny Dominguez na Secretary of Finance. At ang nagpalit dito kay, uh, kay uh, Pernia ay itong si uh, Mr. Chua na uh, bata naman ni, ni Secretary of Finance uh, Dominguez. No? Isa pang maraming uh, balita ngayon ay uh, pinag-uusapan ng posibilidad na magtanggalin uh, na yung lockdown at yung quarantine sa katupusan ng buwan. At nagkakaroon sila ng mga debate as kung paano nilang gagawin ito uh, dahil uh, malaking uh, problema pag nagkamali sila dito Uh, biglang uh, magkakaroon ng search biglang uh, ladami at dadami ang mga maapektuhan ma ng uh, coronavirus at uh, baka hindi na talaga kayanin ng ating mga institusyon sa ating gobyerno lalong lalo na itong mga Department of Health isa pang panawagan na nangyayari na ginawa po ng ating Senado last week pero hindi pa po natatapos ay itong uh, panawagan nila na ipag-resignan itong si, si Department of Health Duque uh, because he is incompetent and, uh, and questionable leadership marami pong ibig sabihin yan baka kasama na rin dyan yung pagkakorap niya. Kasi may kaso po itong si Duque sa ating uh, Korte Suprema na isinampa ng uh, FAO Office, Public Attorney's Office nila Acosta tungkol sa kanyang uh, uh, pagka 
kasama dito sa conspiracy tungkol dito sa Dengbaxia na nagtulak ng Dengbaxia vaccine at uh, may kasama niya na kukunsyaba siya sa mga Department of Health at kay Presidente Noynoy Aquino na tinulukan ng vaksin itong 830,000 children maski na hindi pa talagang na, na susubok o lapang testing itong uh, Dengbaxia vaksin na ito at hindi po natin alam kung ilan na ang napatay nitong vaksin na ito pero kumita sila ng malaki dito dahil bilyon-bilyon ang ginamit nilang pondo para bumili nitong vaksin. Kaya at na na-discovery na may mga anomaliyang nangyari at lumalabas na itong halos buong Department of Health at pati na yung uh, Food and Drug Administration ay uh, nasa payroll ng, uh, ng Sanofi yung malaking pharma na nagbebenta ng mga gamot sa atin at mga baksin kasama na rin dyan ang mga kakuntsaba nila sa mababa kapulungan at sa Senado kaya hindi nila matanggal-tanggal itong mga official na ito dahil ang laki ng lobby money na ipinapasok ng mga pharma para kontrolin nila ang mga baksin tsaka gamot na pumabasok dito sa ating uh, bansa. Yan ang uh, anumalyang kasa kasabuat si Duque na hindi pa linalabas ng mga, ng mga pahayagan o, o ng mga Senado. Pero uh, mukhang uh, Malakas na malakas ang kapit niya kay Presidente Duterte at uh, hindi siya uh, tatanggalin. Sabi nila ang ninong niya daw kay President Duterte ay walang iba kundi si Bongo. Hindi natin alam ito pero ito ang, uh, ito ang uh, chismis. Alam niyo po... Uh, ang sabi nila, wag daw natin papalitan while we are in the middle of a battle. Alam niyo po, we are not in the middle of a battle. We are in the beginning of a battle. We have not yet begun to really feel the effects of this contagion. We are, we are worried that there are more people who will die because of the economic difficulties that are being imposed on, on our people rather than the virus itself. There is no, you know, there is no death certificate issued to people who die of poverty and starvation and the related diseases after that. There, is, there are death certificate issues to COVID victims died of coronavirus, but there is none even to those that die of poverty. We must understand this and must, we must be worried about all of this. Tonight, I have uh, invited a good friend who is staying at uh, who is staying in uh, Florida right now, Tallahassee, Florida. Ang pangalan niya po ay si Ginoong Hill Ramos. Si Hill Ramos ay isang ekonomista na ngayon nakatira sa Florida, USA. Ngunit uh, Dalawa ang kanyang uh, basic residence dito sa Pilipinas at ngayon sa Pansang Amerika. At siya po ay matagal na po uh, kilala dito sa ating uh, uh, 
economic circles, uh, tsaka pati na rin sa mga government circles at marami na po siyang na-advise ng mga uh, official ng ating gobyerno dito sa mga nakaraan dekada. Hindi pa po siya masyadong matanda. Mas matanda lang ako ng ilang taon sa kanya. <laughs> Pero uh, ang kanyang pananaw ay uh, rinerespeto ko hinggil dito sa kanyang uh, obserbasyon at uh, kanyang mga rekomendasyon dito sa ating bansa. I don't know if uh, Hill Ramos is now on... Uh, on uh, We are trying to call him. We just talked to him a few minutes ago. And uh, we explained that we will be calling him uh, for an audio hookup. Kayo pong mga nanonood, and uh, kayo pong mga nanonood, don't uh, fail to, uh, to uh, send your messages. As we go along, uh, I will be reading their messages and reacting to them whenever we can uh, during these uh, short breaks. I don't know if you can uh, touch base with us on audio. Nagagawa ba yun sa ano? Hindi pa. So that parang phone patch din sila, ganyan, if they call in. We have to call them through Facebook. Ah, okay. Hindi pa po pwedeng yung tatawag kayo dito, kami ang kinakailangan tatawag sa inyo. But uh, at any rate, we're working it out so that we will have that technical capability of, uh, of uh, being called so that we can interact, so that we can interact uh, with callers. So that it is a, it is a, a what they call interactive uh, program. From now, we'll take a little break. Uh, so while we're trying to call our friend, um, Hill Ramos in Tallahassee, Florida, USA. I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay. I'm fine. Am I coming out clear with her? Okay, okay. okay. Oh. Okay, balik po tayo dito sa ating katipunan. Ito po yung katipunan na si Butch Valdez at uh, kasalukuyan na tinatawagan natin ng ating kaibigan na si Hill Ramos na nasa Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, he's on? Okay, Hill, can you hear me well? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, good uh, evening there, everybody who is listening to your program right now. Okay, well, we... We are hooked up with uh, DZXL radio from our Katipunan channel. So we are on nationwide radio as well as internationally to the internet and Facebook and YouTube. So we've got quite a bit of uh, listeners of you. And uh, of course, di alam na mga tao ay malalim ka rin magsalitang Pilipino at Tagalog. But at any rate, we can... Explain ourselves any which way you want, where you're comfortable. Yeah. The reason I uh, yeah. I was telling our guests, our our audience, before you came in, that um, you are one uh, person that whose opinions and uh, and uh, recommendations I respect and really consider, especially on what's going on here in the Philippines. Uh, in general, what is your uh, observation? And uh, we can start from there. Because I know you know uh, everything that's happening here up uh, to the last detail uh, uh, that we know. Go ahead. 
Well, well, my feeling is that uh, the coronavirus uh, uh, and COVID-19 exposes the levels of competence of all our people, both in the public and the private sector, particularly in the public sector. Ano yung nagsabi ako ng levels of competence? Ang gusto ko sabihin yan, yung Peter Principal, na kahit sa aming organisasyon, ikaw ay nagpapromote, ang ganyan sa kaya nang gawin. Halimbawa, yung ating mga politiko dyan, ang kaya nang competence hanggang panahalit nila sa eleksyon, magaling silang panahalit sa eleksyon. Pero pagdating sa pagsilbis na ang bayan, na kanilang hinangad, kaya nga sila ka mandidato. Hindi nalipa yan. Eh, pagdating sa oras ng katulad ng COVID-19, hindi nila kaya. Lumalapas yung kandilang mga katulangan. Oo. Both in the levels of mga, yung mga na-elect at saka yung mga hindi, yung mga appointive as well. Pero hindi. Kaya tingin ko sa COVID-19 na to, mas malala pa ito, kaparaho ito na yung nag-lomba yung World Trade Center ni nung mga Al-Qaeda. Aha, nung 9-11. Pagkatapos ang pangyayari yan, hindi na nagbalik sa normal yung pagsakay sa airplano. Lagi ko nang kailangan na inspeksyonin kasi baka may dagat ng bomba. Oo. Sabi natin na tayo babalik sa normal, pagkatapos ng COVID-19, eh hindi na mangyayari yun. Oh. Kasi iba na ang sitwasyon kayo ng mundo. Mm -hmm. Na, for instance, ang isang bagay na na-expose sa ating ekonomiya, ang ating uh, malaking uh, reliance sa uh, overseas Filipino remittances. Oh. Ngayon, dahil sa nag-shrink ang buong ekonomiya ng mundo, mm -hmm. nag-uri ang uh, mga tao dyan, at saka yung mga ekonomiya nila, hindi na kaya mag-sustain nila ng mga employment from abroad, eh wala ang mga perang patatok sa Pilipinas. Oo. Ngayon, ang nangyayari dyan, mabibisto na yung mga economic managers natin, wala ang ginawa ng ilang dekada. Kundi yung magdala ng mga super naids at saka mga super mechanics, super drivers, i-export sa buong mundo. Kasi hindi natin kaya ang gumawa at magmanufacture ng sarili natin yung mga bagay dyan para magkaroon ng employment mismo sa sarili natin bayan. Oh, right. Ngayon, all of these problems are coming home to us. Oh. Ang isang pang problema, ang ating housing. Ang ating housing, related dyan sa levels ng ating mga tao dyan na mga mahihirap, ang estimate ay mga from 18 million to 25 million people. Mm -hmm ay may hirap, almost one-fourth of the Philippine population ay nasa marginal condition. Siyempre, ang mga hukusin niya, ang mga bahay niya ay dikit-dikit. Sabi mo nga sa akin na yung mga ibang bahay sa mga slum areas, isang maliit na 10 square meter sa ganon, ay tatlong pamilya ay nakatira. Kasi palit-palitan sila ng paggamit ng bahay hanggang sa mga labing lima hanggang dalawang pong tao nakatira sa isang maliit na ulan. So, paano sila gagawin yung distancing mismo sa loob ng bahay na yan na kakarampot lang ang espasyo? So, yan, yung housing problems natin, nabubisto na ngayon ng COVID-19 na yan. Marami pang ibang mga incompetence sa ating economic management na lumalabas na ngayon. Kung baga sa plan ay ngayon, nagkatabistuhan na. Yun nga. Yun nga yung nangyayari. Although, We must understand that, siempre, medyo biglaan nito, tsaka maraming never, never did anyone have to confront a problem as big as this, no? Pero I am not making excuses for these people because I can see, at least pag nanonood ako ng kanilang televised short meetings, even with the president, wala pong lumalabas na magagal ng ideas. Uh, Unang-una, puro, puro praise sa ating Pangulo for doing uh, the right thing. Pagkatapos, para yung kanilang uh, dapat uh, malalaman natin kung ano yung plano nila, parang hindi lumalabas doon sa meeting. Ako, eh, naniniwala ako sa intensyon ng ating Pangulo na gustong gumawa ng tama. Pero kung itong mga ito, hindi ilalabas yung uh, dapat ilabas na tama, halos parang magsinungaling na sila sa kanya 
magpapakita lang ng sip-sip ng sip-sip, eh walang mangyayari sa bayan natin na ito. Kung ganyan, ang nakikita ko lang sa not by words but their actions na itong mga economic managers, never mind those people that are in the Department of Health because they're obviously incompetent. Pero itong economic managers natin, parang hindi sinasabi ang katotohanan sa ating Pangulo. At parang siguro tinatakot siya na huwag na siyang makailab sa economic direction dahil katulad nung sinabi niya noon, pinaubaya na niya sa mga advisors niya ng economics kung anong direksyon ng ating ekonomiya. Dito tayo nagkakaproblema kasi ang presidente uh, gustong magsalba ng buhay at ayaw maghirap ang ating from, ang mga mamayan. Pero ang hindi niya alam, itong mga Dominguez, Jokno, pati na rin si Ferdinand noon, wala silang pakialam sa pagsasalba ng buhay. Mas gusto pa nga nilang mas marami siguro ang mamatay dahil sa kanilang mga economic program na ilinalabas sa taong bayan at minisenta nila sa presidente, isa sa pangunahin sa proposal nila ay mag-implement ng more efficient population control program. Ang ibig sabihin na ito, kung nagkaroon ng sakunang kavaris na ito, bakit ka maglalahad ng pera ang kakayanan para may salba mo ang mga senior citizens? Dahil sa kanilang wala po isip, ang mga senior citizens ay wala nang silbi sa ating pamahalaan at bakit tayo gagastos dyan? Pabayan mo nang mabawasan niya mga yan. This is the underlying principle that these economic managers are doing. They are quiet and will tell a lie about the capacity of our resources to help the country because they would want a different outcome from that of the president. Hindi ko alam kung tama ito. Bagay personal na paningin ko lang to. Pero ito po ang nangyayari, hindi lang dito sa Pilipinas, kundi sa iba pang mga lugar ng mundo. Kung paano nilang ginagawa ang tinatawag na depopulation program. Ano yung mga... Uh, yung yung depopulation yung depopulation program na yan, eh, matakal na rin uh, inisip ni Victorian kasi ang mga mayaman sa mundo uh, ang point of view nila ay uh, bawasan yung magsishare ng uh, kayamanan nila uh. para hindi mabawasan yung kayamanan nila uh. imbes na gamitin yung mga uh, tao nito na dagdag na populasyon sa uh, buong mundo na maging productive para lalong tumaas ang antas ng kabuhayan ng lahat ng tao sa buong mundo. Uh -huh. Yan ang uh, malaking point of view sa economics. Yung uh, uh, tingin na ang population growth is uh, a debilitating uh, impact on uh, economic development mm -hmm. rather than a contributing factor to more wealth being created because there are more people who work out uh, and combine with resources to increase the wealth of the world. Mm -hmm. That is a basic uh, argument among economists. Ay right. iba mga malthusian economists, yung mga malthusian economists, pessimistic ang point of view. Mm -hmm. Tingin sa uh, pagdami ng populasyon, eh, what is the problem yan? Uh -huh. Pero yung mga progressive economists na equity-based at saka ang point of view ay uh, more distribution of wealth sa buong, uh, buong mundo, mm -hmm. Ang tingin sa pag-increase ng labor force ay hindi lang uh, units to uh, increase the productive capacity of the world but also units that will increase the consumption capacity and demand the uh, fueled growth systems. Yeah. So yan ang mga bagay na yung mga ekonomist. Ang ekonomist, ang, eko, ang, ang disiplina ng ekonomi, ng, ng pagiging isang uh, ekonomist 
ay medyo common sense lang naman yan. Kaya lang ito mga ibang tao, they begin to talk in terms of jargon para malito ang taong bayan, para madaling ma-manipula. Hindi lang yung mga Pilipino, kundi yung mga tao sa buong mundo. Tama yan. Ang, oh. ang, ang, ang point of view natin dyan sa Pilipinas ngayon, dahil sa crisis na ito, ay uh, una, siguro rin na may pagkain ng lahat ng tao. Mm -hmm. Hindi ata yan ang focus ng mga kwan. Kasi itong mga katulad ng mga point of view ng Dokno, at saka yung si, uh, yung si uh, Dominguez, at uh, saka iba pa dyan, ang tingin nila ng pag-manage uh, ng ekonomiya, yung private sector-led growth. Tapos ang uh, ibig sabihin ng mga private sector ang makunguna sa pag-desisyon sa kung saan papunta ang uh, pagproducto ng mga kailangan nating uh, bagay sa ating ekonomiya. Mm -hmm. Ang ibig sabihin niyan ay dahil sa tayo ay isang mahirap na bayan at ma masyadong concentrated ang wealth sa mga ilang tao lang. Kung tingnan nyo yung Forbes Magazine, makikita mo, kahit na mahirap ang Pilipinas, ang dami ng mga bilyonaryong nakalista sa kanilang 1 to 20 or 1 to 50 richest people in the world. Right. Alam mo kasi, yung mga mayaman sa Pilipinas, once mayaman na, ang point of view nila ng pag-compare ng kanilang kalamanan, hindi na level ng Pilipinas. Uh -huh. Ang pag-compare ng kalamanan nila, yung nang nakikipag-compete na sila doon sa mga nakalista sa Forbes Magazine. Uh -huh. Ang kanilang point of view, kung naiwan pa, wala silang pakialam sa Pilipinas, maghirap ng Pilipinas, kasi yun lang ay kanilang source ng kanilang pagpapayaman sa sarili nila. Oh. Wala tayong mga negosyante dyan na katulad ng mga nationalistic kasaytaksu ng panahon ng BG era sa Japan. Oh. Ay yung mga negosyante na nag-evolve after uh, the Soviet Union collapsed in Russia. Ang politibo nila ay palakasin ang ekonomiya ng Russia. Hmm. Pero hindi na mga Shanghai at saka mga BG uh, millionaires and billionaires na nag-develop ngayon sa China Mm. Kasi eh, hindi na ito mamunta ang China. Kung nag-isip tayo na pamunista ang China, eh, you are still living in the dark ages. Mm -hmm. Ang China niya, maraming mga binungari doon. Itong mga tao nito na nasa China na mayayaman, mm -hmm. ay ang pag-isip na eh, palakasin ang China mm -hmm. sa kanilang mga. Pero dito sa Pilipinas, ang kamayaman sa atin ay nakikipagkompetensya sa mga banyaga para maging kanila, maging partner nila at uh, tulungan ng mga banyaga nito at lalang i-exploit yung mga resources ng Pilipinas mm. to the detriment of the common people of the Philippines. Kaya nga. So, to cite an example, uh, uh, mismo si, uh, uh, I know, uh, I know, uh, para pa, but, uh, Sari Dominguez came from the mining industry. Uh, he was uh, also in the past in the public record shows. He was fronting for Australian uh, mining interest in the yeah, past. Yeah. Ito mga tao na katulad ni Jogno, they think in terms of uh, uh, retirement sinecures later when they work after they work in the Philippine government, they will become uh, consultants or retirees or uh, consultants in the Asian Development Bank or the World Bank. Ang point of view nila, yung point of view ng mga hindi makapilipinong point of view, kundi ang point of view ng mga exploiter na oligarch o ng buong mundo. Yeah. Kaya, ang uh, sinasabi niya, ang, ang tawag niya sa economics ay meron kaya tawag na principal at parakwayan conflict. Mm -hmm. For instance, ang point of nila, Pilipino, taong bayan, pero ang kanilang, uh, ang principal tawag nila, taong bayan, Pilipino, pero ang kanilang agency, they are agents on foreigners, on international interest, not really thinking of what is good for the Filipino people. Ayan nga. Well, uh, parang dalawang klaseng uh, uh, sistema o pag-iisip na when, para, para ma-simplify natin ang sinasabi na mo, uh, uh, Hill, meron isa, ang gusto nila, private sector-led growth. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, buhusan mo ng tulong ang private sector, ang uh, mga oligarko, at sila na ang magdadala ng pag-angat ng ating mga buhay ng mga mamayan. Yung isa naman, ang sinasabi natin, kailangan government sector-led growth 
Tapos susunod dito ang private sector kung ano ang direksyon ng gobyerno. Kasi ang, ang, ang responsibilidad ng gobyerno ay ang unang-una ang, ka, ang kalagayan ng mga mamayan. Dalawa pong uh, sistema ang pinag-uusapan natin. Yun mga dati, mga saibatsus na sinasabi ni Hill at uh, Rat, ang talagang ginawa doon, di, ang gobyerno itinuro at tinulungan ang mga negosyante sa mga productive industries para umunlad ang kanilang industriya at nabigyan ng trabaho ang mga mamamayan. Pero itong nandito sa atin na napakatama talaga ang ginawa natin, yung ating pong uh, ekonomiya, uh, lalong-lalo na ano po, yung public utilities, ang tubig, ang kuryente, ang, ang healthcare, ang uh, transport system, at lahat, pati oil, Uh, if, at ang uh, yung telco system, yung uh, telecommunication, ibinigay po sa mga oligarko. Ito po ang basic services ng gobyerno. Binigay nila sa oligarko para pagkitaan nila ang taong bayan. Pahirapan nila ang taong bayan para umunlad sila at umaman, mailagay sa listahan sa mundo na mga bilyonaryo sila. Ito ang malaking katangahan na ginawa ng ating mga, man, na mga leader sa gobyerno. Kasama na rin yung mga economic advisors na yan na nakinabang, nakinabang dito sa malaking uh, malaking uh, uh, kalukuhan na ginagawa ng mga oligarko hanggang ngayon napakabigat ng pasan ang, ang, ang uh, binabayaran po natin sa kuryente higit na sa doble ng binabayaran ng ordinaryong Amerikano ang ating pong kinikita dito is 30 times smaller than that of the United States o, paano nangyari ito? Dahil dito sa mga mga government officials buhat noon panahon nila Mayor Cory Ramos hanggang ngayon yan ang binibigay nila na pampahirap sa taong bayan ito ang pag nawaan ng ating pangulo kung gaano kabigat ang pinapasan ng ating mga mamayan Naniniwala ako, hihinto ide yan. Ang problema, maaga pa, ibinigay na niya ang uh, pagpapatakbo ng ating ekonomiya dito kay La Dominguez, dito kay, uh, dito kay uh, Jokno, at kasama pa ng mga ibang mga trader sa bayan na nasa kabinete. Yan ang problema po natin ngayon. No? Ang, uh, ang, ang kasalayan, ang kinasalayan ng mga economic managers dyan sa Pilipinas, kahit na sino ang in-charge, yung mga LP o kung ngayon sila Dominguez na under kay Bikong, ay yung dalawa ng sinasabing leverage of economic management na ang assumption ay malakas at saka equitable mm. ang ating uh, productive arrangement sa private sector. Mm. Ang sinasabi nila to uh, stimulate uh, demand, ay eh, kailangan i-operate mo through monetary policy or through fiscal policy. Ang ibig sabihin lang po ay yung monetary level of uh, management ay i-regulate mo ang ating money supply para mayroong price stability at saka yung mga private sector ay makapagplano ng kanilang mga long-term investments. Mm -hmm. Kaya nga, ang ating, uh, ang ating money supply policy dyan ay kinasarabing inflation level targeting. Hindi, hindi productive level targeting ko din inflation level prices. Kasi ang pinaproteksyonan po niyan ay ang mga private sector. Ngayon, ang fiscal, ang fiscal level naman ng economic management ay yung kung paano magagastos ng pera ang gobyerno. Kasi 
Uh, kung uh, ang gobyerno ay narismo sa madalaking uh, activities na para sa pagpalago ng mga servisyo sa tayong bayan, saan gagastos ang gobyerno ngayon? Ang mangyayari niya ng lahat ng uh, fiscal absorption ay nandun lang sa mga bagay na hindi masyadong uh, sensitive or strategic sa ating ekonomiya. Pag tingnan nyo lang mangyayari ngayon sa buong mundo, ang mga bansa na ma, mga successful sa pag-contain ng coronavirus ay yung mga bansa na malakas ang kanilang mixed economy. Right. Katulad ng Japan. Uh, ang kanilang control ng public utilities dahil dating komunista na kanta na hindi na ngayon komunista hindi ang gusto ang tinasabuhin ko do. Ang kanilang imperador mo yung Jepakto is J.C. Ping. Si J.P. Ping. Ngayon, ang uh, kanilang system ng pag-ugabiyas mo Balik doon sa kanilang Monday to the event. Kaya lang, hindi lang isang tao ngayon. Hindi na modernate bureaucracy. Ngayon, meron silang communist bureaucracy of 91 million communist party members. Pero they are only communist in name. They are no longer communist in reality. They are now only the controlling government of China. Same thing is happening in Vietnam. Same thing is happening in uh, Russia. You could say that uh, countries that are now called one-party democracies compared to multi-party democracies and compared to the confused democracy that we have or the pretend democracy that we have in the Philippines. Because we can talk about it in the Philippines. The government is not a control of the government. If you want to be the president, 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 be the congressman, be the governor, in the sensitive areas that are big and big, they are the right to be controlled. So we are the control of the oligarchs, and the oligarchs are partner din ng mga iba-ibang bansa, mga banyaga, na hindi iniisip yung kapakanan ng mga Pilipino. Tama. Kaya mabigat na kalagayan natin. Ito ngayon lahat ay nagkakabistuhan under this COVID crisis. Kasi sa isang crisis na ganyan, parang gira yan. Pag gano'n po sa gira na, yung sinasabing uh, fiscal policy, monetary policy, it doesn't work. When you have a one-time situation, you go, history will show you, at kasaysayan ang papakita, you go into physical planning. Na mag-gera ng World War II sa Amerika, nagkaroon sila ng production board. Na lahat ay kung sinabok kung paano mag-produce ng mga produkto sa Amerika para gumera sa buong aliman niya. Ngayon, ang gera niya ngayon, pinapatay yung mga tao, kung baga sa kwan, invader, nakapasok na yung mga pumapatay dyan sa atin. Wala lang, disguised lang yung ating uh, kung kaya nga mamatay dyan kasi yung ating testing capability yung mababa. Mm -hmm. Pero magkikita mo ang lack of capability natin for several days, mas maraming namamatay kaysa nagre-recover ang ating statistic doon sa World Odometer uh, website. Kaya, wala tayong capability to cure people. Pag magkasakit ka dyan sa Pilipinas, mas mataas ang probability na mamamatay ka sa COVID. Mm -hmm. Pero ngayon, nagsimula na tayo magkaroon ng curative capabilities kasi sa mga donasyon sa ibang bansa, eh, nagkakaroon na tayo ng ha, eh, better recovery ratio. Yeah. Pero ang ibig kong sabihin, we have to concentrate now, our economic managers should think of physical planning, making sure that we have food on the table kasi magsisrink na ang lahat ng bagay na yan. Ang oil imports na tatagulo, ang mga, ating mga sistema na tatagulo, ang system of logistics, Making sure the physical rationing system that we have put on the table becomes the priority. We should also take advantage of the fact that in the Philippines we have ambient weather. If we are just properly organized, we can have three harvests of rice in every year. It is within the fiscal cycle. We can print all the money that we want, exercising our monetary sovereignty with the Philippine government guaranteeing the credit to people who will receive these currencies for production purposes. Yes. So, sa ngayon, sa mundo natin, ang control ng liquidity ay controlled ng international groups. Kasi ayaw nila na gusto nilang makontrol ng buong mundo para sila ay makapag-trade at makapag-control ng mga investment sa buong mundo. Kaya, yung ating sistema ng pag-expand ng ating money supply ay determinado na IMF. Kasi uh -huh. sinasabi nila, itong tinuturo nila kay Digong, na ikaw, Digong, presidente ka ng Pilipinas, pero hindi ka pwedeng mag-imprinta ng pera na lampas sa capability ng Pilipinas to grow. Kasi dapat, 
para sa inflation level targeting, kung ano lang ang produkto ng Pilipinas, ay bala 3% a year ang growth natin, yun din ang pag-stand mo naman yung supply. 3% a year lang din. Kaya uh -huh. so, patutuhanan po niyan, physical planning can, be, can, uh, can trump that. Ngayon, ang projection pala ng uh, ang, uh, IMF sa atin, negative. 0.6% ang growth natin. Ang ibig sabihin, hindi kayo mag-printa ng gobyerno ng Pilipinas dahil doon. Yun ay kalukuran. Yung panahon sa, yes. sa Amerika, uh. nag-imprinta ng maraming pera ang Amerika. Walang pa walang uh, limit hanggang sa 30% of deficit ng credit spending. Sobra-sobra nga ang fate ng Amerika. Itong si Joke, no? Yan ang ayaw na ayaw niya, yung tinatawag na inflation. Eh, hindi magiging inflation yan kung ipapasok mo yung imprenta mo sa mga tamang industriya na pagpalaganap ng production para mabigyan ng trabaho yung tao. It is not inflationary. Yung sinasabi mo, Hill, kaya habang nagsasalita ka, pina-flash pina namin yung mga, yung mga uh, personalidad na nakaraan, katulad ni Franklin Delano Roosevelt, katulad ni Alexander Hamilton, na ang, uh, ang direksyon kanya umunlad ng umunlad ang Amerika noon ay dahil dito sa production uh, capability ang nag, uh, nag-improve ng kanilang uh, mga, mga in the industries. Ngayon, ang ating direksyon ngayon sa, dito sa Pilipinas ay tanggalin yung ating production capabilities. At bigyan ng, uh, ng pera itong mga, uh, itong mga oligarko para lang dito sa public utilities. No production. Ganyan ang nangyayari. Kanya hirap na hirap tayo. Ngayon, I just wanted to move on dito sa pinag-uusapan natin ekonomiya. No? Sa darating na katapusan, Magdidesisyon si Presidente kung anong gagawin niyang uh, uh, lockdown o hindi lockdown, quarantine o hindi quarantine. Ano ba ang nasa isip mo dito, uh, here? Uh, pag uh, yung uh, lockdown na yan, that is uh, ang mag-determine yan ay yung ating health problem. Hmm. Kung gano'n talaga yung problema ng uh, reinfection at sa kaganong klase. Pero sa ngayon, ang tingin ko, uh, sa mga bagay na yan, health issue yan. Pero ngayon, kasi nga, ang, uh, ma ma pwede kang mag-contain ng, uh, mag ng lockdown kung ang gobyerno ay mag-take over at palitan itong inflation level targeting na ginagawa nito economic manager in physical production targeting. Yeah. Ang ibig kong sabihin po ay uh, pwede mag-continue ang lockdown. Alimbawa, magkaroon ng estratehiya ang gobyerno para meeting ang mga tao into a home-based food production system. Mm. Alimbawa, magdawa ng mga uh, home-based method of producing that can be produced at home in terms of food products na sustain ng sistema ng uh, gobyerno. Hmm. For instance, pwede ka mag ng mga fingerlings na tilapia sa isang uh, drum. Pero sino ang susupply ng fingerling? Di yung gobyerno dapat mag-alam dyan. Ngayon, pwede ka magtanim ng palay sa bahay mo o sa backyard mo na walang lupa at uh, gagamit mo lang yung hydroponics. Pwede yan, pero sino ang susustain yan? Ang gobyerno. Hmm. Ngayon, Uh, ang pag-reorganize ng isang society ay uh, batay sa capabilidad ng mga tao to get disciplined and organized. Ngayon, sa mga ginagawa ko yan, kung may mga ibang paraan sila, kaya sila gusto mag-release ng lockdown kasi they're relying on the private sector to organize production. But if government shifts from a uh, private sector-led production process, to a government sector-led production process, ang lockdown na yan just becomes a health problem. Correct. Does it become an economic problem? Correct. That is what I'm going to say. Mm. This point of view is not being discussed. The mm. point of view is that, para mangyari sa atin, kailangan lumabas tayo para ang private sector makapag-organize. Ngayon, 
dalawa sa ibig chapter ng bala si Jack Ma pero sa tatawanan ng Pilipino Jack Ma is one of the billionaires of China pero pero sa tatawanan niya tayo dahil sabi niya gago mga Pilipino binigay ng mga natural monopolist sa mga businessman si Jack Ma galit sa mga natural monopolist galit yan sa mga ang mga tao dyan na nagkukontrol ng ating public utilities. Ang mm -hmm. bala, sa lockdown na yun, uh, ang mga tao nito nag-relay sa, nag sa kanilang mga cellphone, mm -hmm. kaya nga ng cellphone, maging public utility, i-take over yan ng gobyerno. At bigyan ng subsidy ng mga tao para mura ang cellphone connection para they can communicate to their body even if they are at their homes. Okay. And still become productive. Mm -hmm. Paala kasi nung internet masyado kasi ngayon uh, may ibang bansa naging uh, remote uh, system sila pero ang ating ekonomiya ang ating internet dyan sucks kasi kontrol ng private sector at mga gago ang mga private sector na yan mm -hmm. they are uh, not even interconnecting with one another in terms of cell phone connections which is a common thing in most other countries mm -hmm. kaya kailangan ng take over yan ng gobyerno gawin ng communication as a public utility para lahat ng tao ay makapag-communicate and become productive. Ganoon din yung mga sinasabi ko sa mga ibang bagay ng mga uh, uh, public utility ng uh, power na pinag-uusapan nyo palagi dyan. Ang China naging manufacturing center ng mundo kasi ang China mura na ang labor. Tapos mura pa ang kanilang power kasi may nuclear power sila. Marami. Kaya lumaki the past 30 years, China was able to move people, about 1 billion people, from poverty, about 800 million people from poverty in just a 30-year period. Tingnan mo ngayon ang Shanghai skyline, tingnan ang Beijing skyline. In just noong 2008, wala pa yung malalaking skyscrapers dyan. Pero ngayon, just uh, so many years, uh, so, uh, just a few decades away, hmm. ayan na, ang lalaki na ang kanilang mga skyscrapers dyan. Actually. Kasi, kasi dyan, ay masinan mo ito. Sa si Pilipinas, mukhang ating labor, pero mahal ang ating power, sino mag-invest dito sa mga pakturing? Kasi ayan. mahal. We are food not effective. Kaya nga, yung nuclear plant na yan, kailangan buksan na yan kagad, gamitin. At saka yung thorium na ating gamit dyan sa Philippine Benham Rice, gamitin yan. At yan ang naging fuel ng ating nuclear plants. Pwede. Actually, yung sinasabi mo kay Xi Jinping, Xi Jinping, early last year, nag-anunso siya sa buong mundo that the 1.4 billion people of China are all above the poverty line. There is no president in the whole world that can make that claim. No one will dare make that claim. But this guy, Xi Jinping, made that claim. Above the, above the poverty line and 1.4 billion people. Now that is the economy, the economy of China is a uh, working economy because huh. remember that that economy is feeding 1.5 billion people a day. That's right. The Philippines have to feed 105 people, 105 million people a day. Oh. That's only uh, the population of two cities in China. Mm -hmm. But because of our inefficiencies, because of the way our Kobelec is controlled by oligarchs, we are not able to elect people in the public office who really care about the country. We are here only to elect carpetbaggers who do not care about the country. Diyan sa Senado, sino lang dyan ang mayaman na ang pera ay honest po, honest. Si Pakyo lang. Kasi ang kanyang kamawa ang ginamit niya para kumita ng pera. At maaari si Pakyo ang pwedeng mag-negosyo ni Jack Ma para gawin ang home-based production system sa Pilipinas. Yung gawin niya yan, lahat ng tao, baboto na sa kanya, o kung magiging leader siya, kahit wala pang klaseng konfigurasyon ng ating politikan marating. Hindi ako nag-advertise na nga kay Pakyo, pero sinasabi ko lang, sa lahat dyan na may pera sa Pilipinas sa politiko, masasabi ko si Pakyo lang ha, hindi nagnakaw. Ngayon, Ah, yung lahat ng yan are using uh, their influence and their power to gain private uh, advantages and uh, line their pockets. So that is the way our system is also being exposed now mm -hmm. by this coronavirus. After this, we have to think of a way of correcting the way we elect leaders. Mm -hmm. For instance, ayun, ang isang problema dyan, supposedly pupunta tayo ng federalization. Kaya nga nagkampanya ng gusto si Digong doon sa Senado 
na yung kanyang tatlong senador, si Bato, si uh, Trentino, si Bongo, ay pumasok sa Senado para gawin itong process of shift of federalization. Hmm. Pero anong ginagawa ko yun ng mga tao niyan? Si Bongo, yun, papasikat ng tali niya. Kaka gusto niya naging back president na Sara pagdating nito ang 2022. Kinalimutan na itong federalization agenda. Nagsimula pa na sa buhay na, Teka, hindi pwede yun. Oh. Oh, nagkakaroon tayo po ng lag. Uh, nawawala ng konti si... The development of the society is the military. So we have to rely on the military, fuse it to the civilian sector, and we organize our society. We can map up an underemployment and unemployment by putting everybody who are young, 18 to 21, on internship with the military. And then reforest the area or build irrigation, build food production infrastructure. So with the underemployed, you can put them on half pay within the military and organize them as civilian auxiliaries to do things that government should be doing to reorganize our society. There are many ways to do it. There are many ways to skin the cat. Yes. We have to think now outside the box in terms of this right. system because we are in crisis times. We are, as the Chinese would call, interesting times. Yes. We have to have interesting challenges to meet and we have to use our mental faculty to deal with it. Yeah. It, what is important is the quality of mind that we have and with the serious intention of doing what is right. Uh, when you call, in effect, kanina, ang sinasabi mo about the military, uh, there are different levels of military intervention. And yours is, uh, yours is not a direct uh, forceful intervention. But in effect, uh, being able to use the military as an institution towards uh, the productive uh, uh, direction of uh, of the country, di ba ganyan? Yes. Mm. Not with that, we have to uh, exercise our monetary sovereignty and we have to uh, print as much liquidity as needed to be able to reorganize the society. But at the same time, we nationalize all gold mines. It should not be owned by the government. We seize control of the gold production of the country. Mm. Because that is the way the monetary system of the world is moving towards uh, a renewed system that is based on gold. We have to make sure right now that our country controls gold production. We have yeah. to take over all gold production activities in the country. Yeah. Well, yun ang nangyari ng Bretton Woods Agreement uh, nung nakaraan na uh, uh, 60s, uh, for, uh, in effect 50s and 60s uh, here. Uh, pero as of now, sa palagay mo, kinakailangan gold should also be the, uh, the standard that, uh, that will uh, uh, be used for uh, currency relationships, yun ba? Yes, at the same time, gold already has its intrinsic value rather than just its, its exchange value because gold circuitry is what is needed in the digital world of the uh, space technology. And that is where we will be exploiting things in the future. That is why control of gold resource is very important. Because right now, it has not only its exchange value and its total value capabilities, it also has industrial technological value. Yeah. That is why we have to control gold. That's, that's, uh, that there are uh, people that would say because it had already generated an intrinsic value it is uh, it is uh, precisely that that makes it difficult because uh, there is a demand for the commodity at that time when gold was used as a standard gold was not just being used industrially and therefore uh, there was no real demand for it industrially except for those that will use it for jewelry or something else. Now, and that made it, that made it a good candidate for standardization because the value that was imposed on it was a value that the U.S. President Roosevelt assigned to it, which was uh, at that time uh, thirty-one dollars per ounce, uh, and everybody had to accede to that uh, because it was a value 
that was just uh, given by the largest economy and most functioning economy in the world. Ngayon ang nagkakaroon sila, but I don't want to get into this, kasi meron pa tayong mga pag-uusapan. But uh, just, just to give you a, another viewpoint, ang nagkakatalo sila ngayon, pag ginawa mong gold, sabi nila, magkakaroon ng iba-ibang uh, debate uh, at kung sino anong, anong value ang ilalagay dyan dahil may mga industries na if we don't protect yung mga ibang bansa na gumagamit ngayon ng gold. No? Ngayon, ang gusto ko lang sabihin na kinakailangan dahil itong sistema ng ito sa mundo hindi na magiging pareho at nagbabagsakan ng mga ekonomiya kasama na diyan ng Amerika at mga iba pang European countries ang medyo matindi ang uh, China at ang uh, ang uh, Russia sana magkasama-sama itong mga ito sila Amerika, si China, si Russia, si India, si Japan, no? para mag-decide kung ano ang sistema at ang standard na gagamitin. At yun ang sasabihin nitong mga pinakamalalaking ekonomiya kung ano ang direksyon ng new economic order. Uh, whether it, if they decide on gold, so be it. No? But I think... Uh, meron silang uh, ascendancy over the rest of the world. Dapat kung tayo marito sa usapin ng gold, yeah. hindi ako nag-argue ng uh, pure gold standard. Uh -huh. The more important question, the more important issue is for countries to recruit and recover the countries of the world, big or small, should recover their monetary sovereignty. Correct. It should not it should not be dictated on internationally, which is con uh, by international institutions, which are controlled by international financial oligarchs. That's right. I agree. If, uh, if, if the shift to gold is a way for the Philippines to secure that and recoup and recover its monetary sovereignty, by all means, we should do it. I agree. The debate, the debate is not about gold standard or non-gold standard. The debate is in the world today. Mm -hmm. is how countries can recover their monetary sovereignty. Correct. And this that is behind the European Union currency. This is behind the Brexit capability of uh, issue. This is behind now the move of the BRICS country, mm -hmm. uh, Russia, Brazil, and uh, mm -hmm. China, to uh, have their own currency union based on the U1 and the ruble. Right. This is effort of the world to recover the monetary sovereignty which we have surrendered for so long yeah. to international financial oligarchs. Correct. I agree. Uh, that is the main issue. That is the perspective. Yan ang mga ekonomiya, economic lessons sa dapat ituro sa Pilipino. Hindi yung mga kalokohan na paglito sa ating pag-iisip para tayong madaling manipula itong mga economic managers ko na bansa natin na ito yung mga ahente ng foreign interest. We have to change our economic curriculum in our universities. There is a new paradigm that we have to present uh, in order for us to uh, develop and really develop in accordance with our own capabilities. But when you do yeah, that, yeah. but when we do it, yeah. no. Yes. Uh, when, when, even when, uh, as, as uh, Hill Ramos is saying exactly what uh, I agree to, no that we need economic sovereignty. Whatever system we must come up with must be a system wherein all sovereign nation states can get together and use for one single objective for the development of all populations of the world. Indeed, where they isolate ka like the, the one country versus the rest of the world. This is not the way it should be seen. 
They should be one sovereign nation state in combination with the rest of other sovereign states uh, for one particular objective. This is for the development of all populations. here. I wanted to emphasize exactly what you're saying, but I went step forward to remind the people that meron project at program na inilalahat para sa atin para pumasok tayo dito sa sinasabi na nyo, sinasabi ni Hill at aki pong um, sinasabi sa lahat ng nakikinig at nanonood. This is called the Belt and Road Initiative. It is a global infrastructure project connecting all seven continents of the world via high-tech transport systems, connecting all of them, seven, so that you can go around the world by land, riding on maglev levitation, magnetic levitation trains, going a thousand miles per hour, traveling in trains that can bring box of tradable goods in every country in the world using this massive uh, infrastructure that now 150 countries have signed into. This is the development for the all population of the world without losing your sovereignty actually asserting your sovereignty to be part of the world development. And that is why I wanted to, it was a good opportunity to mention this, because there is an alternative to what we are doing now. We have many solutions for us in the Philippines, but we have to attach ourselves to the kind of projects that are being made available to our leaders for them to join in into this uh, collaborative global effort to improve the quality of life of all populations. This is, this is basically a system that, in, that can be led by four powers, Russia, USA, China and India. These four countries alone comprise more than one half of the world's population. And they have the capability to lead other nations into a new paradigm shift, a new Bretton Woods Agreement, uh, wherein, wherein uh, everybody is moving away from the from the debilitating concepts of geopolitics. Ang kagaguhan ng geopolitics, pinipilit tayong kumabwe sa mga malalakas natin na, na military might. Kakabwe tayo doon para kalabanin natin yung ibang malakas din. At but dahil ina-anticipate natin na magkakagera, kapwi na lang tayo doon sa iniisip natin na malakas. That is utter stupidity. Because pagdating ng nuclear war, wala pong may iwan. Walang malakas at mahina. Patay lahat tayo, lalo na dito sa Pilipinas. Pinipilit ng pinipilit nitong mga gagong anti-China, pro-America. Pinipilit nila ang mga kasinungalingan na sinasabing i-occupy tayo ng China. Ang China ni isang lugar sa mundo, walang military base. Ang Amerika, 600 plus military bases around the world. Tapos ang sinasabi natin, ang masama ay ang China. This is a demonization of China to prepare for conflict, not by Trump, 
because Trump does not want war. It is being prepared by evil-minded people, not just in the United States, not just in London or Britain, but all over the world, including here in the Philippines. They have their surrogates, people who think that the world must be divided between Russia and China and U.S. That everybody must fight and we will be part of whoever is going to win. It is utter stupidity. There are no winners under that. But the real winner is if we can get these four leaders of nations, you have Trump, China, Putin, and India, to lead the world into this global infrastructure project. You see exactly what Phil Ramos was saying. The concept of sovereign nation states that have now the direction and sole decision as to where our country should be going in, uh, in terms of industries and participating in the world uh, uh, development projects. Yanang, I want to... Yeah, go ahead. I want to emphasize what you're saying. You have identified through Trump, uh, Xi Jinping, and uh, also uh, China, and uh, what's the other country? India. In India, China, Putin, uh, Putin uh, Russia, uh, Russia, and uh, Trump. Yeah. These are the four economies of the world that are the largest. Yes. So, in effect, by coming together, they are guaranteeing uh, a new monetary system based on the credit based on the capability of the economies to produce what can be demanded uh, of them by this new world currency system. That's right. Now, what I'm trying to say here is that our economic managers and financial managers should begin to understand the nature of free credit. Yes. Credit is a sovereign asset Yes. It is something called by the government under a system of fiat currencies. The reason for the dollar's hegemony is it is a fiat currency guaranteed by the military basis of the United States all over the world. It says the dollar should be used for trade because we can guarantee order and exchange and we can guarantee enforcement of contracts. Mm. We have to understand credit is actually backed up by new economic capabilities. So the credit of the Philippines should be owned by the Philippines. The credit of the Philippines is backed up by what the people of the Philippines can produce and what the resources of the Philippines can produce in exchange for a currency which is the Philippine peso. We have to understand that. <coughs> but our economic managers and financial managers do not understand that. No. Ultimately, the credit of the United States is backed up by what the American economy can produce. But aside from that, there is what you call an exchange value of the dollar, not just the intrinsic credit of the dollar. Because they are maintaining military bases all over the world to maintain trade in order in international trade and enforcement of contracts all over the world. That is why in addition to the value, the intrinsic value of the dollar, based on the economy of the dollar, not of gold, but based on what you can claim against the economy of the United States. Yes. You also have that exchange value. This is my dissertation, the global exchange value of the dollar. So I speak from authority and expertise on this. Very good. Yeah. All right. I don't know. So my important to say is this makes, we have to understand, our economy is our credit. Managing our economy is managing our credit. That is our guarantee that whenever anybody in the world holds a Philippine peso, that Philippine peso can be redeemed in terms of services, in terms of resources and goods from the Philippines. Correct. What our managers have been doing is very irresponsible. 
instead of creating more value and wealth inside the Philippine economy, what do they do? They export people, they export OFWs, they expose our countrymen to rape, murder, and premature death in these areas, or risky areas of the world, because our economic managers and financial managers of the Philippines are not creating policies that will increase the wealth. The combination of labor and resources of the Philippines that can produce wealth inside the Philippines and therefore fund and intensify the credit of the Philippines in relation to the rest of the world. Credit is a sovereign asset. Credit should be managed properly. Credit means organizing and managing resources of our labor and resources inside the Philippines. That is what is not understood mm. by most of our economic managers and financial managers. Correct. That is because our generation, uh, yours and mine, were, uh, were uh, poisoned by a new kind of economic teaching. It is good that you and I am sure a few others have not been able to have not um, have not uh, surrendered to the misleading principles of economics that were taught to us in the universities, and decided to see it in the re in the way real and sovereign individuals can see. Uh, the debilitating system that had been created to put countries like the Philippines in the situation where we are in now. I, I cannot agree with you more here, maybe even more with it, uh, much of what we have been saying. We have, but together, uh, maski na ngayon, itong pinag-uusapan natin, alam ko medyo medyo mabigat medyo na nosebleed siguro yung mga ibang nakikinig at nahihirapan intindihan ang sinasabi ko lang sa ating mga nanonood at nakikinig pilitin nyo po pilitin nyo pong unawain ang sinasabi po namin dito ni Hill at lahat ng gusto natin magiging uh, magiging uh, kasama dito Meron pong ibang, ibang mamamalaan sa pagpapatakbo ng ating ekonomiya. Ang sinasabi natin ngayon, itong ginagawa ng ating mga economic advisors ay walang pinagkaiba doon sa mga pag-iisip ng mga nakaraan economic advisors na nagbibigay ng uh, ng uh, ng uh, advice sa mga datihang presidente. Kanya patuloy pababa ng pababa ng pababa ang kalidad ng ating buhay. Ang pinaka-problema natin ngayon na ang ating mahal na palulo pinaubaya mo ang ekonomiya dito sa mga masasamang pag-iisip na walang magmamahal sa taong bayan. Yun ang problema po natin. At hindi niya po alam kung gaano kalaki ang damage ang, ang uh, pagsispaninira na ginagawa sa ating bayan at sa mga darating na henerasyon. Ang mangyayari po dyan, dahil po nahihirapan ng nahihirapan ng mga taong bayan, ituturo nila na ito ay responsibilidad ng ating mahal na Pangulo. Itong mga Dominguez na ito, mga Jokno, mga Medialdea, mga Kusi, ay nakatago sa likod niya. Papabayaan nilang bumagsak. Papabayaan nilang murahan ng tao. Pagdating ng panahon na hindi nila na kinakayanan ang kagutuman na nagdudulot ng sakit. They will betray this president as they are already betraying him now. 
we must wake up yeah. as a people. We must wake up as a people. And uh, what should be understood is to be able to create wealth so we are able to recruit the Philippines. We have to be organized our society into more productive society. Right now, what we have is a dysfunctional society. We do not have the best optimum combination of labor and natural resources that can be done. We are, ex we are exporting our minerals instead of uh, manufacturing them into more production inside the Philippines. We are uh, exporting our labor instead of utilizing them to become very productive engineers and productive technologies inside the Philippines. We are not we are not we are not enhancing our capability to communicate among ourselves to control of the public utilities of communication. Because we are not able to do it because it, this is this we have a dysfunctional system of uh, cell phones that are uh, uh, that are really uh, inimical to a more uh, productive communication process. We are not able to uh, leverage the capability that we have in the English language, which is the computer-based language of the world. Mm. We are not able to do that because we don't have an internet system wherein we can work at home in the Philippines and export our expertise to the rest of the world through service as uh, a demand. Uh, software as a service demand to all of this because we don't have the infrastructure to do that. But we are a very talented people. This is shown by the fact that when we are sent out in, in different parts of the world and we are able to enhance our faculties and our capabilities there, we excel. Mm. But inside the country, inside the country, we are exploited. We are persecuted. We are subjected to an oligarchic controlled economy. Mm. That is just uh, a satisfying process and not an optimizing process. Mm -hmm. They make sure that progress happens in the Philippines, but progress that is under their control and which they own. Rather than a progress that is common to everybody and progress that will lift everybody into a better level of wealth. And we should brag like Xi Jinping that nobody is poor in the Philippines. Because we in the Philippines, we have the protein sources of the sea. But do we have exploitative processes that will optimize our harvest from the sea? No. We have the Bureau of Prisons that's corrupt, making people enter, making fishing vessels enter the Philippines. That's why I wrote a poem when I was a student saying, I wish done my holy sasarilin bayan, of the things that in Bahan I made in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Kasi, ito yung nangyari sa atin, kalukuhan ng ating pag-organize at pag-organize. Kaya ngayon, sinasabi ko, the government, the gun, if we have the guts to do it, should take over and lead the military to reorganize our economy, to reorganize our system, and produce more wealth for every Filipino. Mm -hmm. What do we have? Uh, we will have some constraints. We may have the possibility of military abuses. But not all in the military are corrupt. Mm -hmm. There are people who collect them and check them. You have the example of people like Ben Magalo, or the original the mayor of Baguio City. Not all people in the military are corrupt. The military had a bad rap before because there were bad eggs in their system. Mm -hmm. But we have the most organized system in our country. The most organized institution is the military. We use it to reorganize the rest of the country. We use it to lift these 25 million people of us that are in poverty. Organize it. Combine our late resources with our resources, not resources, our malampaya arrangement, only having 5% for us was terrible. The other resources that we have, we should organize it properly. We should create wealth for the Filipinos in the Philippines. We should exploit Philippine labor and technology, computer capabilities in this language facility that uh, translates into software expertise in the Philippines to a strong communication system. We have to produce wealth in the Philippines and you will have less people like me who are living abroad because we can't make a good living in the Philippines because we don't have the opportunity to do it. So that is the situation that we are in. We have to wake up. We have to have a new reality. In the post-COVID world, we will only have to rely on our own resources. 
he can no longer rely on the economies of the world to sustain FW in it himself. This time will not be the same thing. The new normal will be different and we have to be ready to accept that and ready to cope with it. Yeah. Okay, we will have a break now uh, and prepare for a day. We will be reading some of the text messages uh, that have been sent by our listeners. Uh, uh, just hang on their heel and then uh, we will have our last uh, few minutes uh, together again for you to give your last uh, statements and possible reaction to some of these questions, uh, remarks. Okay, that's all right. But are you up there? Yeah. Okay. We're on break. Oh, uh, are there any areas that you want me to emphasize? No, no, that's fine. Okay, we'll go. Uh, was, okay. I, was I coming on was I coming on too strong? No, no, no. Before? You're all right. Okay, and dito na po tayo. Oh, wait, balik po tayo dito sa ating katipunan. Dito po yung katipunan si Butch Valdez. At uh, kasama natin uh, ang ating po kaibigan na si Hill Ramos, uh, isa po mga dalubasong ekonomista na ngayon ay uh, nasa Tallahassee, Florida, USA. So we're linked up to him by, uh, by uh, Facebook. At uh, uh, so now, babasahin po natin yung mga, na mga pinapadalang mga mensahe ng ating mga tagapakinig at mga nanonood. By Itos. Go ahead, Itos. Okay. Winda Corpus. Mabuhay, sir. Always watching. Freddy yeah. Oledina. Present. Uh, okay. Sidhai Baghari. Mabuhay ka, Kabuch. Uh, Shona Lee. Hello. Um, uh, Levi Sorizo. I'm not sure what he meant. At kamusta naman? May naparosahan ba? I'm not sure what he meant. Uh, uh -huh. Lourdes Aquario, good evening, Bob. Evelyn Amorao, good evening, Kabuch Valdez, watching from San Pedro, Laguna. Mm -hmm. uh, meron Magi o Kasla, Duque is a criminal, yet he is not held accountable by the government. Dapat tanggal na ang criminal na ito, conniving with WHO for commissions. Mm -hmm. uh, Cesar Soberano, ano po ba sa palagay niyo bakit napakamaraming namamatay sa at nahawaan sa US? Ang pinakamayamang bansa po ba ay nagkakamali sa kanilang healthcare strategy kaya talos run away na ang mga COVID-19 datos nila? Do you want to react to that here? Oh, yes. So in the U.S., uh, there are uh, huge uh, uh, infections, but the capability, they have always been able to cure more than uh, those that are not recovering and dying out of the disease. Mm -hmm. Right now, the uh, problem of the U.S. is that they are trying to uh, do um, uh, more normalcy and they want to return to normalcy as uh, quickly as possible because of the fact that they know but the hegemonial role of the dollar would suffer much if they continue to force the economy. So that is why I think it's now a situation of them calculating the risk involved of opening up the economy back to normal as, as soon as they're able to have protocols to at least contain the spread of the disease. Mm -hmm. Right now, in terms of uh, absolute numbers, the U.S. is number one. I'm not defending that system. It's just that because they have a big system and they have relatively less constrictions in terms of their uh, voluntary lockdown process, mm -hmm. you will see a flattening process, but the flattening will not be happening abruptly. Uh -huh. Okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, Freddy, Freddy Oredina, Fauci, uh, Deo Grazia Pavia, Boss, come lang daw ang COVID. <laughs> 
Freddy Oredina Fauci was a Jesuit institution educated. Uh, okay, she, she, Sheherazade Alonto, good evening, Katiponeros. Sheherazade. Sheherazade, uh, step down, Duque Asap. Freddy Oredina, Dr. Shiva told that Sanofi is bankrupt and the only hope of Big Pharma is vaccine with less problem on litigation. Magi uh, O'Kasla, uh, do not follow the big gamers of this fake coronavirus 666. Get back to working, magtanim ng kakainin para di tayo magutom. From Magi O'Kasla. Ar Arnie responde, Good evening, Pope Professor Sir Boch, watching Robinson's Galleria Ortigas. God bless po. Okay. Levi Sorizo, kaya nga gaw gawin at gawin din sa iba kasi kaya nilang paikutin ang justice system sa Pinas because of money. Evelyn Amura, malakas bumulong ang bubuyog na si Bongo sa Pangulo kaya kahit maliwanag pa sa sikat ng araw ang mga kawalang ni kawalang iyan ni Duque at di kayang dispatsahin ang Pangulo, ng Pangulo. Mm -hmm. The main problem, Freddy Oredina, the main problem of our health system is being connected to big pharma and medical schools funded by deep state people. Mm -hmm. USA, AHA, ACS, CDC are all run by big pharma. Our medical professionals, hospitals are linked to them. They are discarding our traditional way of battling viruses and bacteria. Mm. Dr. Pelagio June Batung, prevention is not being considered. Mm. Okay. Uh, crime Bastre. Crime Bastre. Basta pag kakaperahan si Duque, Dominguez at iba pa. Pabilis pa sa alas 4, basta may komisyon. Watching from Thailand. Mm. Sheheraz, Sheheraz Zaid. Si Dikia Duque, di niya talaga alam ano ang trabaho niya. Di niya kaya pamunuan ng DOH. So ano pang hinihintay mo? Sinusuka ka na ng bayan. Magkusa ka ng lumaya sa opisina mo. Durana Philip. Then vaccine shots given to 830,000 Filipinos in 20, oh, 2016. In 2016, the DOH launched its anti-dengue inoculation program and gave them vaccine shots to over 830,000 adults and children in Central Luzon, Calabarzon, Manila, and Cebu. 1,100 deaths in the Philippines from dengue epidemic, 113% higher than 2018. 271,480 dengue cases recorded. Mm. Official data from January 1 to August 1, 31, 2019 show. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Rod Voigt Periabas. Good evening, Katipunan. Wala pa rin pagbabago. Puro magnanakaw pa rin hanggang ngayon tulad dito sa Subic. Ilan ni... Ilan lang ang binibigyan ng DSWD at barangay ito pa pinipili lang ang binibigyan. Pero ang purok leader dito sa amin, isinama lahat sa kamag-anak niya. Ay nako, bayan, DSWD bulok from Subic. Mm -hmm. From Yukotake, they should have better people in departments like uh, labor, health, finance, etc. Puro walang kwenta. Remy Fernando, kung wala kang kaharap dyan at malayo kameraman mo, e eh baka pwede pakialam naman, mas, pakialam naman mask mo. Good example yan to the public, but I'd rather see your face <laughs> from Remy Fernando. <laughs> so, chat mo kayo at uh, medyo may konting karamdaman lang, but uh, I will show you my face in a while. It's here. <laughs> and... Uh, we will be uh, removing this when, uh, when, uh, alam nyo kasi, nadagdag ko na lang ha. Uh, dito sa statistika na basa ko, nagaling sa DOH mismo, alam nyo po, bago po tumama ang mga COVID, ang, ano, ang coronavirus sa atin last year, bago pa tumama, 
For the past how many years, maybe two or three years, the number of pneumonia cases, pneumonia cases in the Philippines was totaling 6,000 cases every month. Hindi po natin alam kung gaano karami yung namamatay dito. Pero alam niyo po pag nanumonya kayo, medyo malapit-lapit na kayo sa pagkamatay dahil infected na at puno na ng problema yung inyong baga. Ang mga pneumonia cases na 6,000 every month, every month yun, last year, before the coronavirus, ay 70% or more ay yung mga senior citizens. Ngayon ang hindi ko alam kung bakit pagdating ng coronavirus, 300 people ang patay sa atin after one month ang laki-laki ng pro malaking problema para sa atin. Pero tahimik itong DOH na tsaka si Duque tungkol dito sa statistika to kung gaano karami na ang namamatay sa pneumonia bago pa dumating itong coronavirus. Sa makatawid, sa aking pong palagay, mas malaki pa ang namamatay sa atin at hindi masabi-sabi ni Duque. Dahil lalabas na ang kanyang, ang kanyang uh, incompetence, ang kanyang pagsisinungaling, ang, at ang kanyang pagkakurap. Pwede niyo pong i-check yan sa Department of Health. Kasi hindi po talaga nila may tago. Matagal na tayong nagsasabi bago pa yung coronavirus. Na pag nagkasakit ka, huwag kang pupunta sa mga hospital agad-agad. Maski na yung mga doktor natin sa hospital, sinasabi umuwi na kayo agad, baka baka tamaan ka pa ng pneumonia dito. Yun po ang sinasabi nila. Kanya po tayo, kamo senior citizen, nag-aalaga po tayo sa sarili natin, hindi para ma, uh, may iwasan ang pagkakontamina sa atin at may iwasan din tayo mag-contaminate sa iba. Kanya po, uh, pagpasensya na nyo na po muna itong aking mask. Marahil by next week, pwede ko nang uh, matanggal. Salamat po. Okay, Leomar Beltran. Sir Boots, sana po may ma-recommend sa inyo na sa Pangulo upang ipalit sa nagbitaw na si Pernian. Total, isa rin po kayong ekonomista at founder po ng Pro Duterte Group na si Defense National Guard. Kung hmm. sakali man po hindi kayo mapili, sino pong palagay niyo deserving maging NEDA Chief o Secretary kung kayo ang datanungin? Kaya po kausap ko. Hmm. Ito po kausap ko si Hill Ramos. Pwede ko po siyang i-recommend. At pwede po siya sa ibang uh, lugar ng uh, ekonomiya ng ating bansa. Marami po mas matalino dito sa mga taong ito sa, sa gobyerno ngayon. Yung si Chua, may gatas pa sa bibig yan. Utusan lang yan ni Dominguez. Hmm. May isang magaling na uh, tao rin dyan, si... Uh... Dr. Bruce Tolentino, dati siya na nasa UV, marunan niya po sa rice production. Si Bruce? Kaya po din na po rin na tayo sa medan. Bruce Tolentino, okay, that's a good name that we remember. No? Marami pa po, no? pero ang problema, hindi po sila classmate ni, ni Duterte. At hindi po nila ipapakilala yung mga yan kay Duterte. Dahil maaga pa, ipinaubayan na ni Duterte ang ekonomiya kay Dominguez at kay Jok, no? So, hindi nila, papa, hindi nila papakilala ang mga taong nag-iisip na taliwas doon sa kanilang intensyon. Si, si Bruce Tolentino kaya, nasa monetary board na hmm. ng Central Bank. So, madali na siyang ihanay at iparit. Okay. So, 
Very good. Okay. Ronil Torres, hello, good evening po ka radio man. Uh, Sheherazade Alonto, Procopio resigned now na. Now na. Mardinio Saona, sir, walang auditing na binibigay na suporta sa mga tao. Bigay dito sa QC, walang listahan, malaking anomalya ito. George Alvarez, thank you, DXL, Butch Valdez, mabuhay, more power, God bless. Mardonio Saonas, 3 billion para sa QC. George Alvarez, test kit lang o rapid test, kaya yan ng, kaya yan ng civilian na magbayanihan, malaman agad ang masakit o wala, ang may sakit o wala. Dapat noon pa, pantagal dahil sa adik sa power, sa kapalpakan, planong mga buso si Duterte at ng martial law. Hmm. Nagdahilan pa kayo ng katotohan, walang COVID-19 kung maaga pagad si Duterte and DOH, etc. Alam nyo, sobra na power adik niyan sa kapangyarihan at maraming abuso. Wala kayong wag kayo sip-sip sa tao, Diyos lang. Duterte resign, caretaker government, cabinet secretaries resign, challenge. Thank you, DCXL, Butch Valdez, sa buhay, more power. Thank you. Okay. Well, um, okay. Wag nyo pong uh, mam, um, mamalihin ang aming pong sinasabi dito. Hindi po kami against, personally up to now, I am not against President Duterte. He is our duly elected president. And I believe his heart and mind is really for the people. But I also believe that he should not have abdicated his role as a leader of this country in all aspects of governance, especially is economics. Ang economics po ni President Duterte ay sentido common. Mas matalino po yung sentido common ng Presidente kisa dito sa mga advisors niya na si Dominguez at Jokno. Dahil po ang sentido common, kung nakatutok sa kapakanan ng mamamayang Pilipino, ay hindi magkakamali. Ito pong sinasabi namin ni Hill Ramos, sa katotohanan lang, ay sentido common. Nakatutok sa kapakanan ng mga mamamayang Pilipino. You cannot go wrong if that is your objective. Next. Okay. J J.M. Ko Manahan, naghihintay na buong mundo sa emergency broadcast si Trump laban sa global Illuminati, Hidophile, Satanic Elite. Nasabihin niya din soon, totoo nangyari sa 9-11 inside job. J.M. Ko Manahan, uh, search QAnon, John Allen Fountain and Timothy Holmes for secret news and intel. Mm -hmm. Freddy Oredina, election, it's not the vote that counts. It is who count the votes, sabi ni George Soros daw. Tama. George Soros was quoted the saying, it is not the vote that counts, it is who counts the votes. Mm -hmm. Si George Soros po ang may-ari ng Smartmatic. Ito mm -hmm. ginagamit natin sa ating eleksyon nung naka ilang dekada na ginagamit natin ito buwan doon kay Cory Aquino. Sige, next. Yan, si George Soros. Tandaan niyo po yung mukhang yan. Hindi <laughs> namin alam bakit buhay pa. Siguro may iniinom na gayuma o ano. No? Pero napakasama ng taong yan. Uh, Reggie Maloy, Maloloyon, Abenido. Good evening po, Sir Woods. Si Itos, Sir Itos, kay Sir RJ at Sir Toti na rin. Magandang gabi po. Masagana 99, dinadaya, dinaya, dinadaya po ni, Dute, ni Duque at DOH ang statistika tungkol sa COVID para maging mabango siya. Hmm. Alam nyo, tuwing minabasa ko yung statistika ni Duque sa DOH, 
Palaging naaalala ko yung SWS statistics pagdating ng trending sa sa election. Parang walang pinagkaiba. Iba lang ang pagmamanipulate. Pero pareho lang ang kanilang panggugoyo sa taong bayan. Freddy Oredina, being quarantined or alone weakens the immune system according to Dr. Shiva. Hmm. Kasama natin si RJ Habiliana, mabuhay. Mabuhay ka RJ, thank you for watching. Uh, kasama hey, natin si RJ on Tuesdays, di ba? Si RJ po at saka si Totti Casino, kasama po natin every Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8 to 9 p.m. in this Katipunan channel. Masagana 99, mukhang ang Smartmatic kakuntsaba na ni Duque. Replying to Masagana, tatakbo yan, Senador. J.M. Ko, manan, daang libo may COVID sa US and Europe. Resign na din dapat silang lahat. Ha, ha, ha. Mm. Marvin Anastasio, good evening po sa inyong mga sir. Still listen on radio. Mabuhay po kayo. Joseph Barredo, Butch Valdez sir, mabuhay. Watching from Dubai. Noel Valencia, mabuhay. Noel Valencia, bakit nakamas kahit nasa loob kayo? Yun na nga. <laughs> Nasagot na. Nasagot ko na po yan. <laughs> Wilma Man Man Manzanillo, no to vaccine by Bill Gates. Um, okay. Okay, Dorana Philip, Bill Gates sold his big company. He invested through big pharma company. Hmm. LA Vista hanggat walang death penalty sa mga korap na yan, hindi yan mawawala. Hmm. Jerry Valiao Calamba Senior, sana po Filipino language ang gamitin nyo para lalong maunawaan. <laughs> Oh, sisikapin po namin ni Hill uh, magpipilipino language kami palagi uh, tuwing uh, lalabas siya dito pero gusto ko lang na uh, maalala nitong mga nag-text sa atin na bagamat uh, itong mga tinetext nyo about Bill Gates, George Soros at lahat ang katakanilang kasamaan uh, ang importante po itong pinag-usapan namin ni Hill Ramos ngayon na ang kinakailangan natin gawin at huwag na tayong maghintay na matapos itong coronavirus nito ngayon pa lang nagpaplano na tayo sa isang bagong patakaran ng ekonomiya ngayon pa lang ito pong sinasabi natin dapat gumagawa na tayo ng master plan so that it is ready to be implemented As we are battling this disease, as we are battling this this coronavirus pandemic, kasi habang meron tayong plano at gumagawa na tayo nito si nasabi natin ni Hil Ramos, going into productive economy na, yan ang magpapalakas ng ating kakayanan labanan ang sakit, hindi lang itong coronavirus kundi yung mga darating pang bagong sakit kasi alam nyo po yung coronavirus madaling madaling mag mutate nagiging bagong sakit at hindi po natin nasisiguro na magkakaroon ng iba pang bagong epidemia na dadating kaya importante po palakasin natin ang sarili natin ng ating ekonomiya ang ating, ang, ang ating kakayanan by focusing on economic development. Kasi yung dating ginagawa nila Jokno at ni Dominguez, pinatunayan na walang kakayanan pag dumating ang sakuna. We have to start now. Huwag niya pong aalisin sa inyong pag-iisip. Ang focus po natin ay ang kinabusak, kinabukasan at ang darating na henerasyon o darating na uh, uh, taon. Kasi doon lang tayo talaga magkakaroon ng kakayanan, labanan ang kung ano man sa kunang haharap sa ating uh, bansa. Yung mga, yung mga may katayanan dyan, kailangan na magpulos na o gumawa ng mga paraan 
na magkaroon ng uh, pagpalasa, pagkaroon ka ng hito o kaya ng terapia sa loob ng inyong mga bahay. Mm. Kahit na sa barrels ng uh, uh, mga drum lang, mga plastic drums. Pwede ka rin yan eh. Kaya mm. uh, yung mga may katayanan, mag-aaral ng aquaponics at hydroponics para kahit na sa garden, malaki ang production na mangyayari. Mm. Uh, sa mga food production, food software, para hindi magbutom ang tao ba yan. We have to use the natural climate uh, that is ambient in the Philippines for raising food. We do not have to be dependent. Hindi tayo dapat maging depende sa mga mga corporasyon na kontrolado ng mga oligarko mm. para meron tayong makain at magpukapagpulos ng sarili natin pagkain sa ating mga bahay. Uh, okay. Okay, you quote a key. Yes, idiots are... Yes, idiots are those who say China should be made to pay for the spread of this virus. Mm -hmm. When in fact the disease was spread by tourists on those cruise liner owned by Americans. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Yuko. Alam mo si Yuko Take here. Uh, kilala mo din yata si Yuko Take, di ba? Kasamahan natin, yeah, yeah. Kasamahan yeah, natin, yeah. Kasamahan natin siya sa KDP na? Uh, sa Japan. Yeah. At uh, ko yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Ernie Ocampo Talagang, kontrolado ng mga oligarko ang buong bansa at mas hina sa buong mundo. Of course, kasama dyan si Bill Gates at iba pa. Tanging mga bilyonaryong negosyante ang piling personalities ang involved dito. The Illuminati is worst source of it. There is something to do with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yung bangus and tilapia made in Thailand, sabi ni Aimee Adrias. Okay, uh, so far yun na eh. Okay, uh, isa lang, uh, isa pa rin na kung uh, kung sa'yo dagdag, doon do, na pag-usapan na natin noon. Uh, itong si Aimee Marcos, uh, hindi niya linulubayan ang panawagan niya kay, uh, kay Secretary uh, Dominguez na Uh, gumawa, gumawa ng uh, paraan para magkaroon tayo ng moratorium on foreign debt service. No? Ako ay uh, sumusuporta dito sa panawagan na ito. At si uh, Secretary of Finance Dominguez, agad-agad, sinabi niya, hindi niya pinag-iisipan yan, hindi niya pag-iisipan yan ngayon o kailanman. Alam niyo po, pag ikaw ang uh, nakaposisyon, at nagbabayad ng sampung bilyon na dolyar kada taon sa pinagkakautangan natin at na gagarantiyan nila na hindi mo pipigilin ang pagbabayad na yan sa so, palagay niyo po ba magkano ang komisyon na ibibigay sa inyo wala po tayong pleba tungkol dyan separate yung mga komisyon na yan dinideposto sito sa labas ng Pilipinas pero hindi po tayo kailangan masyadong mag-usisa. Alam po natin na yan ang nangyayari. Maski wala pong ebidensya. Ah, ano po na pagbayad dyan ay basis sa sinasabing basis points. Oh. 100 basis points is 1% of the total. Usually ang mga binibigay niya na ay 10 basis points. Which is 1-10 to 1-10. One-tenth of one percent is one billion dollars. Hindi po ba? It's about a full of pag-a-tiyan nila yan. Oo, pero napakalaki niyan. Hindi po ba? So, hindi nila pipigilin yung pagbayad sa utang. Ang utang na hindi naman natin talagang tinanggap. Ang utang na nag-globo ng nag-globo dahil we, our currency was manipulated to devalue against the dollar periodically and regularly over so many decades. That is the result of our credit being imposed from us internationally right. because we don't have our monetary sovereignty. That's right. We realize that credit is controlled by us and should be a sovereign right of every country, mm -hmm. then the world system will change. Robert Chubb is now proposing that the former uh, 
Prime Minister of the Soviet Union because the present international system is failing uh -huh. in bringing about one thing in the world. That's good to uh, hear. So you the system, the system of China was able to make Xi Jinping glad that the entire 1.5 billion people of China are now above the father behind. That's right. Very good. Okay, here, naubusan na tayo ng panahon ngayon. No? Uh, magbigay kayo sa inyo ng iyong uh, uh, last statement bago natin na uh, Bago natin ni Sarado at uh, uh, ako na ngayon nagpapasalamat sa iyo uh, sa iyong pagsama uh, sa atin dito sa sa uh, uh, programa natin. Okay, go ahead. Well, the main message I would like to give uh, sa ating mga economic managers is to free their minds because uh, the most uh, difficult uh, type of uh, liberation is liberating your mind from old concepts. Mm -hmm. They think they're working independently. They think that they are doing uh, their things right by their conscience. Na tama ang ginagawa nila. Pero dahil ang kanilang pag-iisip ay mali at nandun na ang mga maling uh, framework, ang nagagawa nila ang epekto ay mali at masama para sa taong bayan. Hmm. They have to begin to free themselves from that thinking and begin to think of what is the proper way hmm. to manage Philippine resources hmm. for the benefit of the Filipino people. Hmm. Okay. Maraming salamat po here. Uh, at nabigyan mo kami ng pagkakataon. Sana this will not be the first uh, last. and last time that we are going to be having you. At uh, marami pa tayong pag-uusapan sa mga darating na panahon. Thank you very much. and I will be participating. Thank you very much. Keep healthy. Uh, and we have a future to take care of. Right, salamat. Yes, Gil Ramos. Okay. 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 Yan po ang ating... Uh, programa ngayong gabi at uh, naubusan na po tayo ng panahon at uh, sa alam po ng ating mga sana po bago, bago ko mag uh, extra uh, uh, pag uh, pagirapan po natin kung medyo nabibigatan tayo sa topic pilitin natin itong uh, sakyan itong pinag-uusapan natin dahil napaka importante po ito alam namin Uh, yung mga iba ay uh, medyo uh, mas gusto yung mga konting uh, politika at konting ganito pero ito pong isinusubo ko sa ating mga tagapakinig ay napaka importante yung kaalaman importante importante po ito dahil ito po ang ating uh, solusyon na uh, magpapalakas ng ating kakayanan humarap dito sa mga darating na sakuna. Ito pong COVID virus na ito ay umpisa pa lang. We are just in the beginning of the battle. That's why it is important that we have the right people, the right kind of thinking that will push and support this country towards the, towards the future. Si Duterte po, is the right man for the right job. But his cabinet is now failing. And if his cabinet fails, they will point to him as the leader and the responsible person that will, uh, that will carry their mistakes. Ibibintang po nila yan kay Duterte. Yan po ang palaging nangyayari. Wala po tayong nakikita ng mga economic managers na advisors na nakukulong o na, 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 na paparusahan o na bibilify o na insulto 
kala natin sila ibang mga hari, ibang ibang mga tao na hindi pwedeng uh, tamaan, hindi pwedeng uh, insultuhin. Pero sa lahat po ng nakaraan na uh, kasaysayan, hindi lang po dito sa Pilipinas, kundi sa buong mundo, ang mga economic advisors po, ang pinaka nagpapahusay o nagpapabagsak ng mga iba-ibang liderato. Naumpisaan po yan noon, noon pa, hundreds of years ago, yung mga tigabulong, yung mga advisors kung anong gagawin, anong gagawin. No? They are not elected by the people. They are just advisors. Pero gagamitin nila yung kanilang uh, kalapitan sa ating Pangulo para i-direct ang, ang, ang patakbo ng ating bansa hindi in accordance with what the President wants. Not in accordance with what the President's intention is for the people but in the accordance with only their idea and their ideology. This guy joked no? and Dominguez, like I have said repeatedly before, together with people and characters like Joey Salceda are all depopulationists. Their idea of an economy for it to prosper must allow a higher mortality rate of the population. Mabawasan ang population. Hindi po sila gagalaw na gagawa ng paraan para magpalakas ng kakayanan ng Pilipino na mabuhay ng matagalan. Hindi nila gagawin yan. Ito po panawagan ng ginagawa ng KDP at ng Kamao, ang inyong lingkod, sila, sila RJ Abellana, si Toti Casino, ang walang humpay na panawagan natin na ang public utilities na i-take over na ni, ni Duterte, at ikunin niya ang kapangyarihan mag-decide tungkol sa pangamolekta ng kuryente at ng tubig at ng iba pang public utilities. Kasi pag binababo yan, ang laki pong uh, ginhawa ang may bibigay sa taong bayan na walang gastos ang ating gobyerno. Binabalik lang po natin yung ninakaw sa atin itong mga oligarko sa pamamagitan ng pagkukuntsaba nila sa mga nakaraan na administrasyon. Sila po ang may utang sa atin ng bilyon-bilyon, halos isang trilyon ang utang nitong dalawa o tatlong oligarko pa lang. Isama mo po yan yung mga nasa kur kuryente buwan sa tubig at sa kuryente. Malaking malaki po ang kanilang utang sa ating bansa. At ang kala natin, sila'y napakagaling at mayayaman. Ang kayamanan po nila ay galing sa dugo at hirap ng ating mga mamamayan sa nakaraang dalawang po, tatlong po taon. We have to realize this. Huwag tayong masyadong pag-goyo. Pag mayaman ka, para kang sinasanto, mas kinalam nilang magdanakaw ka. Ano ba ang nangyayari sa atin? If you want to save this country, if you want to save your lives, if you want to save your children's lives and your grandchildren, stand up. Join us in this fight. We are not politicians. We don't want politics. 
We have more politics because of what it was doing to us before. They are all crooked, mercenary, and we don't want to be counted together with them. But it is our duty to continue to advocate what is right for our people. It is our purpose. You will forget us because we are not popular. We are not uh, politicians. But I hope the ideas that we inculcate in your minds and in your hearts will be retained. Not as ours, but as yours. But as yours. To be able to share this with your communities, with your families, with your children, and with your friends. Maraming, maraming salamat po at magkita po ulit tayo sa darating na linggo dito sa ating katipunan. Thank you.